I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. Rioting explodes in yet another European country, this time Romania, by protesters fed up with government austerity measures. With EU unemployment at 10%, Europe's leaders are caught in a squeeze between angry electorates and fickle financial markets driven by merciless ratings agencies. Recent ratings downgrades, including against France, have further deepened a crisis already complicated by faltering talks on Greek debt financing. The EU is struggling to boost its financial financial rescue provisions and enact reform to avoid the next crisis. EU leaders disagree on just how tough a European stability union should be on deficit-plagued countries. The leaders are also aiming at financial services reform, including a tax on transactions. Critics say that and other reform could drive investors from Europe, especially London's financial center. But after that city was hit hard last year by public anger spilling into the streets, even the conservative government there is eyeing banking reform. Now, wired into this edition of the network is here at the European Parliament in Brussels, German MEP Malkus Felbel, a member of Chancellor Merkel's Christian Democratic Union. He also sits on the Parliament's Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. From London, Louise Cooper, markets analyst at BGC Partners, who says the fiscal compact European leaders want does not actually deal with a crisis. And Dominique Plion, economics professor at the University of Paris and a member of ATTAC, that's the Association for the Taxation of Financial Transactions for the Aid of Citizens. He supports the proposed Tobin tax on financial transactions. Welcome all of you to the show. Let's start with a question to all of you, starting with Malchus. Will Greece default in March? And perhaps should it? No, it will not default. I think uh, we have to protect the euro, and that means that all the measures which have to be done will be done, and Greece will solve its debt problem in a few times with the private investors. Louise, is that a rosy outlook? We hope that Greece does not default because uh, who knows what the impact could be. We would be in completely uncharted territory. However, negotiations are difficult at best. Yep, pretty dicey. Uh, but, yep. uh, Exactly. So very difficult negotiations. Okay. Dominique, should perhaps Greek, Greece default? Well, we may have a, a Greek default, but what the major reason for that is that the policies which have been implemented are not the right one. Policies which are focusing only on austerity are very, very dangerous, not only for Greece, but for all European countries today. Okay. Well, that's exactly it. Uh, who's for, uh, th th this fiscal pact for balanced budgets? And some call it a suicide pact, like economist Joseph Stiglitz. Is this, are these measures killing the patient? Louise. I think if we're not careful, we could look back at Angela Merkel's desire and the German desire for fiscal austerity as being a, a comparable mo policy mistake to the mistakes that were made in the 1930s Great Depression. Um, what countries urgently need is economic reform to regain competitiveness okay. and fiscal austerity imposed across all of Europe is not going to help. Okay, Luis, uh, but, uh, Malchus, she's beating up on your boss. What do you have to say about that? I think uh, what we have to do is both to organize economic growth on the one hand, but on the other hand, to protect the interests of the European taxpayers and Europe will not function if everyone is spending and Germany has to pay the bill. Okay. Now, some think that this fiscal pact, if agreed on, it's going to encourage Germany to agree to euro bonds. What do you think, Dominique? No, I don't think the euro bonds is right now the, the right uh, solution because we don't have uh, um, institutions for that. We don't have a political union. So who is going to control these um, euro bond emissions? So I don't think this is a good solution. And also the rule of the ba balanced budget rule is a very... Uh, con very dangerous uh, proposal. So all these policies are really not the right one for the moment. Louise, uh, Eurobonds, a lot of people in the financial sector are calling for Eurobonds. What do you think? Throwing more debt at the problem is not the answer. If Germany wants to save the euro, it needs to actually give the money over. What we're seeing at the moment through the EFSF, the ESM and the I IMF right. is just throwing more de debt at these countries. Debt, that's like giving an alcoholic more alcohol. It doesn't work. Malkus, what is the answer then? 
I think Eurobonds is the wrong answer and I can fully agree what has been said. The answer is on the one hand to organize reforms in all member states and especially in Greece we need an administrative reform, a reform of education and a lot of those things. And on the second hand of course to organize that states can live with the money they get from the taxpayers and that has to be done as well. Okay, well, that's, that's exactly it. There are some calls that for, for more structural changes in Greece, but how possible is that, Dominique? Well, I think uh, the question is not so much, um, should be not raised in the Greek level, it should be raised also at the European level. And I think there is a big problem with the ECB, the European Central Bank, which doesn't play completely its role of lender of last resort compared to other countries like the UK or the, the US. Right, right. Dominique, Louise, I guess there, there are two things here. Should, should the European Central Bank really become the lender of last resort? And on the other hand, what about these structural reforms? Should we loosen labor laws? Should we loosen other uh, employment laws so that, uh, that, that would encourage business to, to thrive? Of course we should, uh, you know, economic reform is needed, but it's very politically unacceptable. We've seen strikes in Italy uh, just, you know, yesterday uh, right. because, you know, a lot of people don't like economic reform and the politicians aren't brave enough to say, we're going to cut welfare spending, for example, right. or we're going to reform all these markets. Okay. And the politicians in France and many other countries don't want to take unpalatable choices. And Marcus, what about on reform, on financial reform? Should we have what they call that Tobin tax, 0.1% that would raise an estimated 55 billion euros a year, and what should that be spent on? Firstly, I think uh, Germany has shown that reforms will be successful. The economical success we have for the moment in Germany is because we did our reforms in proper times, and that shows uh, that other member states should follow this signal. Whether Tobin tax is the right answer, I don't know. We are working for the moment strongly in the European Parliament on a financial transaction tax, as we think the financial sector should okay. take its burden as well. Okay, Dominique, you're one of the champions of the Tobin tax. Argue that. Yes, first I would like to say with respect to the Germany's reform, the problem is Germany's reform has been non-cooperative reform and they have been at the expense of other countries in the rest of the Eurozone. So this is the first point I would like to say. And second, of course, I think the financial transaction tax would be a very good idea, not only to fight speculation, but yep. also to have some uh, tax revenues for the European budget, which okay. we need now desperately. Okay, but, but Louise, do you think, do you think he's, he's being unrealistic? If you're going to impose it just on one area, then it will divert you know, business elsewhere. In other words, and, you're saying it should, you know, be, it should be completely global, international, which well, is not going to happen, right? It's never going to happen. And, you know, here we are in a situation where each country is desperate for revenue, desperate for, for income, desperate to do. The UK is very good at financial services. Why would we, in a time when we don't have much, you know, when, when you know, our okay. budgets are looking bad, our government budgets are looking bad, why would we throw away an industry that we are good at? Last question, very quickly, how much is the euro in danger? A lot of people talk about that, but how much is it in danger now? Dominique. I think it's in very great danger because the policies which have been implemented are not a good one. Uh, I would like to say about financial transactions is that the fact that most today financial transactions are speculative transactions. This is why they are socially very dangerous. This is why we have to reduce this type of transaction. This is the aim of the financial transactions tax. Okay, okay. Uh, Malcus, is there your own danger right now? The euro is not in danger and we should trust in the euro in the future as well. But to say it very clear, it can be done that the financial sector, especially in the United Kingdom, does whatever they want and at the end the taxpayer pays the burden and that has to be taken into account in the UK as well. Okay, uh, Louise, last word, you know, the, the, the euro stays strong. Is it really in danger? It depends on what time frame you take. Five to ten year view, absolutely, it will not exist in its, its current form. Near term, we are kicking the can down the road. The ECB is doing an awful lot of the, the weight lifting of, uh, of, of really sorting this, this crisis out. Politicians are still failing. Okay, Louise, uh, thanks to you, thanks to all of you. That's all the time we got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Malcus Felbel, Louise Cooper, and Dominique Plion. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.